and the fully illustrated BBC book, More Record Breakers, is available from booksellers. Tomorrow at five past five, the Christmas Eve edition of Blue Peter, when you can join in the carols around the Christmas tree and enjoy the fun and games of the Blue Peter Panto. That's tomorrow at five past five. Back to today now for a rent a ghost special, Rent a Santa. are coming to collect their groceries. I mean, they won't enjoy their Christmas very much if they find out I'm a ghost. Hey, there's the postman. Oh, the postman! <laughs> hey! There's some mail for you, Mr. Dutton. Oh! And for me. Yes, it looks like you're writing, Mr. Claypole. It is! Huh? Well, this quaint custom did not exist when I was alive, so I decided to send cards to my friends. The Seven of Hearts. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> Oh, Mr. Claypool. Yes, it is me. <laughs> I'll treasure it. I cannot understand why these lights do not work. I connected them up most carefully. <laughs> Hello, no, 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 the phone, Mr. Claypool. <laughs> this is Rent a Ghost. Let us haunt you, and you will be sure of a fright Christmas. Oh, never mind the advertising slogans. All I'm sure is there's going to be a cold Christmas. There's no heat in this concert hall. Seasonal greetings, Master Mika. I would like to shake your hand. Well, don't bother. It's already shaking. Now, look, don't you forget that the pantomime rehearsal starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. I want you spooks here and ready to help out. Certainly. Uh, what do you need? My head exam and for letting you take part. Oh, there is one thing. I shall be coming over to collect the money for the tickets you've sold so far. And when I get there, you can make me a nice cup of tea. <laughs> oh, oh, Harold, have you seen my magic lamp anywhere? Hold this and pull. Why? It is a modern Christmas custom I heard Master Mumford talking about. What? Well, the modern slang for sausage is banger, is it not? Yes. Well, you said it is a modern Christmas custom to pull bangers. Oh, crackers, you fool. Oh, it seems even stranger to pull crackers. It's a pity we haven't got a fairy for the top of the Christmas tree. Hey, hey, that'll be my mum and dad. Look, you two better alter your appearance. I like to tidy up. Ooh. Hurry up and change us, Mr. Oh. Capo. Fine, now I'll go and let in, Mr. Mitt. Mr. Cooper, what have you done? Transform me at once. If you insist. Oh, Mr. Cooper, stop it. <laughs> Don't be so silly. Please, Mr. Cooper, what are you doing? Oh. Please, Mr. Cooper, please let me down from here. Coming. Merry Christmas, Mr. Yes, Seasonal yes. greetings to you both. Oh, would you care to pull a cracker with me? <laughs> Will you pull a cracker with me? No, thanks. I prefer pulling custard greens. How eccentric. I trust you both received that which I sent you for Christmas. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you very much. Oh. What did you give me for Christmas? Oh, well, I don't know what your father got, but I got diamonds. Diamonds? Yes, the Ten of Diamonds. <laughs> well, it's quite a novel idea, really. I mean, if he sends you a card every Christmas, you'll end up with a complete pack. In 52 years' time. <laughs> <clears throat> Went to Santa. Why do the tree light up when the phone rang? Perhaps it's a trunk call. <laughs> a trunk call! <laughs> 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 <clears throat> 
That's a funny looking fairy. Ye God, but it's ugly. Closer inspectors even uglier still. Oh, come on, Sheila. Let's get out of this Master Meeker is on his way over here. That was Mistress Meeker on the phone. She's very busy rehearsing the part of Aladdin. Oh, really? Then what's Mr. Davenport busy rehearsing on top of the Christmas tree? Oh, he is being a fairy. But because of his ugliness, he is not a success. <laughs> Get him down! Oh. <laughs> Your stupidity is mind-boggling. It would take two of you to make a half-wit. Now change me back at once. Oh, oh thank you. Good grief, I thought I saw an ugly big fairy beside the Christmas tree. I think it flew away. Seasonal greetings. Would you care to pull a cracker with me? A what? Pulling biscuits is a Christmas custom. Yeah, well, so is pulling legs. How novel. Oh, I guess pulling mm. legs is the Yuletide version of shaking hands. Oh. <laughs> All right, where is the money for the tickets you sold so far? Oh, uh, it's in the other office. You've got the ticket stuff, Mr. Davenport. You better check them. Oh, right. One, two, three, four, five. I trust this pantomime will not be as disastrous as the last concert given by the Meekers. But I seem to remember the audience expressed its appreciation by throwing flowers at them. Oh, they did. Unfortunately, they forgot to take them out of the pots. I will make Master Meeker a cup of tea. <coughs> How many spoonfuls of sugar does he require? <coughs> Twenty-two, twenty-three. Oh. Now, about our new rent ghost project, Renter Santa. Yeah. I've had some business cards printed. Oh, great. And all the profits are to go to charity, right? That's right. But when you hire yourselves out of Santa Claus, is it for parties and big department stores, understand? We don't want you interfering with the real Santa Claus. Oh, no. Have a cup of tea. Oh, thank you, Mr. Claypole. <laughs> oh, ah! What have you done? Oh, allow me to make you some fresh. Oh, no, I'm not standing to be poisoned by you spooks. I shall go home and let Ethel do it. Oh, Mr. Claypole! And don't you forget the rehearsal tomorrow night. Well, it seems you should be very busy rehearsing the pantomime in the evening and doing rent to Santa by day. But there won't be any rent to Santa unless we rehearse that jingle. Well, practice makes perfect. Oh. <clears throat> Too many stockings to fill for Christmas? Rent to Santa Claus a day. We'll deliver, come what may. You won't ever hear us knocking. But we'll fill your Christmas stocking. Sweets and toys and just a shade of the magic stuff that dreams are made of. Shows and thrills and lots of fun. Merry Christmas, everyone. But father, I don't want to marry the vizier's son. It's Aladdin I love. Uh, Aladdin is not the man for you. I, the Sultan, forbid you to see him. Little does he know I am hiding a few feet away, secretly hiding. Not so loud, Ethel. You were supposed to be whispering behind the door. You said you wanted me to be heard in the circle. Yes, in this circle, not the Arctic circle. Now, Mark, to me. <laughs> When's about time you lot turned up? Get down. Oh. But these are the tame spooks I told you about. That's Mr. Claypole, Mr. Mumford and Mr. Yeah. Davenport. Th this is Marjorie. She's playing the princess. I offer you seasonal greetings and would like to pull a leg with you. Oh, ah! It is a pleasure to grasp the limb of such a lovely lady, Mistress Marjorie. You are tall, fair and beautiful. Mr. Claypole, you are short, dark and hands off my leg. Oh, you are indeed a sight to behold. Maybe, but I'm not a sight to be held. Oh, she loves me. No, she doesn't. Look, if you finish with your fun and games, perhaps we can get on with the rehearsal. Now, I want one of you to play the genie, and when Aladdin robs a lamp, I want you to make a magical appearance. Bye -bye. <laughs> Good. Right, Ethel. Give them the cue. The princess's eyes have been flooding with tears, but she'll soon dry up when the genie appears. I am the genie of the lamp. What have you come as? Mitt Whittington. Turn again, Davenport. Look, I want one genie and one genie only. Well, since the genie lives inside the lamp, it must be me. Only I have the psychic skills necessary to make myself tiny to go inside the lamp. Like this! Mr. Claypole, you cannot establish squatters' rights in Aladdin's lamp. Come on out of there. When you get him out of there, we'll resume rehearsals. Harold, coffee. Oh. I think a little sharp persuasion is necessary. Yes. Now will you come out? Nay! Right. 
<laughs> Shaving foam seems to have completely covered Mr. Claypool. <laughs> well, after all, he's only a little shaver. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't work yourself into a lull, Mr. Claypool. <laughs> <laughs> Most amusing. What am I doing in there now? <laughs> we cannot tell. You're completely covered in the foam. Since you find the inside of the lamp so interesting, you shall both see it at closer quarters. <laughs> <laughs> and there you will remain until I release you. <laughs> Here, have you been out in the snow, Mr. Claypole? And now, for you, lovely lady, I am enslaved by your beauty. I am yours to command. I would gladly live for you. Don't bother. Oh, come now. You cannot reject my friendship. I appeal to you as a woman. But you don't even appeal to me as a man. Well, he's not a man. He's a spook. And now, have you decided which one of you is playing the genie? Yes! No! no. <laughs> Look, if you can't make up your mind who plays what I shall decide for you, Mr. Claypole will be the genie. Well, what about Mr. Mumford and myself? I trust that we shall be given roles that match our talent and acting ability. Oh, yes, you will. You shall play the pantomime horse. <laughs> oh, nay! Oh, yay! All right, that's it for the night. We shall start rehearsing again tomorrow no, afternoon. Mr. Mika! Oh. Farewell, oh pretty one. I remain your fervent admirer and your friend to boot. Don't tempt me. But Mr. Mika, please. Good night, Good night, Good night Marjorie. It's coming along very nicely, dear. Which is more than I can say for you, Ethel Mika. I am very worried about the way you are playing Aladdin. It lacks sincerity. It lacks conviction. It lacks. Credibility. Oh, oh, what a oh, 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 I think he's wonderful. And that's what just my opinion is his, too. Oh, hello. Uh, Adam Painting. Oh, you, you came and haunted my fancy dress party last year. Do you remember? I was dressed as Dracula. Oh, yes. <laughs> we didn't recognize you without the fangs. <laughs> How interesting that you're doing a, a Mika Dramatic Society pantomime. I believe this is the third production they've done this year. Did you see their last show? I do hope so. Oh. <laughs> Only joking. Anyway, I heard your jingle for rent Santa today, and I was wondering whether you'd care to come and work in my department store as Father Christmas. What, all three of us? Well, yes! yes. <laughs> oh, splendid. Come and see me in the store tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Ethel, I'll tell you. Oh, hello there. I, I, I saw you in the springtime in Transylvania and <laughs> loved it. Mind you, I've got dreadful taste. <laughs> oh, I do envy you all this. I've always wanted to go on the stage. <laughs> Hi, little lady. I'm Ethel. Now, look, Ethel, as I was saying, your Latin is a cardboard character. It's too dimensional. It lacks subtlety. May I remind you that the last time I played Aladdin, the local newspaper critic was most impressed by the way I built up the character layer by layer. He said, and I quote, mm, Ethel Meeker's Aladdin grows on you. If it grew on me, I'd chop it off. Now, look, Ethel, you can't just switch off after rehearsal. You have to live this part every minute of the day. What an excellent idea for improving her performance. Very well. Mistress Meeker shall live the part. Hello, Mr. Meeker. We're sorry to trouble you, but we called at the office to see Fred and found the place closed. We thought you might know what he was doing. Ah, yes. Well, he's got a job in a department store. I've got the address written down oh, somewhere. Okay. Would you like to come in here and sit down? Oh, oh thank yes. you, yes. Uh, before I get the address, perhaps you'd like a Christmas drink. Welcome, good friends. Gracious lady, may I bid you good day? And to you, good fellow, a thousand felicitations. <coughs> May I wish you a pleasant stay here in old Pekin? I always thought it was South Ealing. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel, haven't you got some work to do? Uh, uh, perhaps you'd like a nice little Christmas drink. <gasps> Capital idea! Soon I must leave you. I have to give my wicked uncle his desserts. I would like to boil a banana in oil. Well, don't let us keep you from your cooking. A toast to love! Life and happiness! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Turns out quite nice for the time of the year. <laughs> quite balmy outside. Yeah, it's quite balmy in here, too. Ethel, please! <laughs> I'll just get that address where your son is working. <laughs> oh. I bet I know what you want. You want to know where Freddie Mumford is. Who 
wants to know where Freddie Mumford is? Me, please. <laughs> I don't hear much from this side of the house. Come on, you can shout louder than that side. Who wants to know where Freddie Mumford is? Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps you don't want to know where Freddie Mumford is. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, oh yes, yes, we do. do. Oh, oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes. Here is the address where ah. your son is working. Oh, Apple, yes. Yes. Apple, 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 <laughs> Raise the room, it doesn't belong to you. Now, Paintings Great Department Store, North Street Number 134. A Paintings Great Department Store! Never leave me No, Evan, get on with the housework. Oh, God! No, Evan! Ah! 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 I couldn't face two nutters in one morning. I don't blame you. <laughs> and what have we here? A nice surprise for Robin. And one for um, Rosina. And one for, for Susie. Now, you'll all be good children, won't you? This year. And I'll see you next Christmas. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mummy. Bye bye, children. <laughs> oh, I am relieved our first day is early closing. Conditions are absolutely exhausting on the second floor. Yeah. And on the third floor, too. What a pity that Christmas comes around just when the shops are getting crowded. I think you've all been splendid, Father Christmases. This is the first year we've had a Santa on every floor of my department yes. store. And you know that Mr. Claypole is going to use his magic powers to fire the sleigh all over town and deliver your free gift. Oh, splendid. My best customers and their children will be thrilled. Yeah. Does anyone think that worries me? When they see your sleigh going over their homes, would they wonder where the uh, reindeers are? I say they've gone to the stag party. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably won't notice us up there. Huh? Of course they will. Well, why? Because. You'd better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He knows if you are sleeping, he knows if you're awake, he knows if you are good or bad, so be good for goodness sake. So, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. The kids in girl and boy land will have a jubilee. They're going to build a toy land all around the Christmas tree. So, Watch out! You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. And Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Into Wonderland, Santa Claypole speaking. Ah, just the spook I want. I've a shrewd idea you were responsible for making Ethel behave like a demented Aladdin ever since yesterday. But I was merely fulfilling your wishes. But since you do not approve, <coughs> behold, the spell is cancelled. Yeah, and a bad time, too. Now, look, where is Mumford and Davenport? We're rehearsing the horse scenes. They're supposed to be here in this costume. But unfortunately, our new job prevents us from rehearsing. <coughs> Now look, if Masters Mumford and Davenport cannot be inside the pantomime horse skin, then I, Santa Claypole, shall give it a magic life all of its own. Oh, no, I... Oh, yeah. oh, 
King, oh, 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 yes. oh, 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 he has given it a life all of its own. Oh, oh. it's a real life, pantomime horse. Oh, oh, I think it likes me. <laughs> all these parcels make it very crowded in here. If any of these conditions are enough to give us all Santa claustrophobia. <laughs> hmm. Sorry. Hey, hold it, Mr. Clay, hold. Yeah, I think this is the house. Yes, but I'll make the first delivery, Mr. Davenport. Thank you. What have we here? A nice surprise for little me <laughs> This next one's for the house just across the road. I think they would be delighted to see me in person. I shall materialize sitting at the bottom of the chimney. Ho, ho, ho! Well, well, well! What have we here? What have we got for... Ow! Ow! How did I know the fire would be? No matter what we do, something always seems to go wrong. Yeah. Well, just look at that cat down there. I mean, he's got no problems. I wish I were him. But he will never get higher than that roof. We ghosts have the whole sky to explore. Would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar. You'd be better off than you are. Or would you rather be a mule? Is an animal with long furry ears The brick covered everything he hears He wore his back is brawny But his brain is weak He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak And by the way, if you hate to go to school You fool, you may grow up to be a mule Or would you like to swing on a star Carry moonbeams home in a jar You'd be better off than you are Or would you rather be a fish In a room. He can't write his name or read a book To fool the people is his only thought But although he's slippery, he still gets caught And so if that sort of life is what you wish mm -hmm, You could turn out to be a fish And all the monkeys aren't in the zoo oh, oh, oh. Every day we meet quite a few oh, oh, oh. So you see, it's all up to you oh, oh, oh. Aren't you going to kiss me under the mistletoe? I wouldn't kiss you under chloroform. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> under chloroform. <laughs> you stop following me about like a pet dog. Oh, I thought I'd die of shame and bother us all the way home. Especially when he tried to get into the taxi with us. I can't imagine why I was taking such a liking to us. Here, keep away from those chrysanthemums. Oh, there's a second on a flower that's eaten. Sure, I've just about had enough of this. Get out of this room. We want to eat our dinner in private without some idiotic panto nag breathing down our necks. Now, Ethel, 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 just ignore it. Sit down. How about dinner? Ethel? Nothing's happened. Uh, try and put a bit more cruise in your suit. Oh, see. Uh, I don't yeah. know whether I seasoned it enough. Oh, it'll it'll be be all... how, how soon do you think it'll be before we can get rid of the H O R S E? Well, Mr. Claypole's very busy, so I don't think we can get rid of the H O R S E. Will you get him out of this room? No way will I eat my dinner with a horse sitting at the table. Well, perhaps I could put it in the sitting room. Well, no, that's not a very good idea. There's a there's a bear patch on the carpet where it's been grazing. Here, look, get it. <laughs> look, you rags, tell you'll get off that seat before I turn the moths on you. All right, Ethel. I shall go. I said I shall go. Sit. Oh, oh. Sorry, sorry again, Mr. Baker, but uh, they told you at the department store Fred was out making deliveries or something. So I can't give him the Christmas cake I'd made for him, and I'm afraid it'll go stale if it isn't in something, and all the shops are shut. What so my I've wife got is caps. trying to say is, can you lend us a tent to keep the cake in? <gasps> I think we've got one in the kitchen, so I'll just see if I can find it. Will you sit up straight and take your hooks off the table? <laughs> Phil, she's having dinner with a horse. Who is? Mrs. Meeker. 
This is a kind of a horse. Must be very fond of her. It keeps leaning over and nuzzling her neck. Probably trying to get at the straw in her head. Well, I told you we shouldn't have come back to this nut house. Well, there you are. Now, if you'll excuse me, Martina is waiting. Well, don't choke on your nose bag, will you? Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring ting tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Out here the snow is falling and friends are calling you. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, let's go. Let's look at the show. We're riding on a wonderland of snow. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, it's grand. Let's strike up the band. We're gliding along with the song of a wintry fairyland. The way it craves attention. Oh, now it wants its tummy tickled. All right. Mm. Tickle, 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 tickle,
transports the princess to Aladdin's house while she is asleep. Now, could we have a, a spectacular magic effect for that, Mr. Claypole? Uh, Mr. Claypole, yes. Oh, uh, certainly. I, the genie, will make you, the pretty princess, appear magically floating in the air, yet fast asleep. Thus. Oh, very good, Mr. Claypole. You might have asked her first. Apologise for the inconvenience. You know, when I first met Mr. Claypole, I didn't like him very much. But now that I know him better, I can't stand him. She does love me. Oh, no, she doesn't. No! Come on, you stupid nag. Come on. Harold. Harold, he just trod on Mr. Arkwright's foot and broken his big toes. So that's that. We've lost our widow, Twanky! That's not the only thing we've lost, Ethel. That phone call was from the warehouse. All our furniture with the pantomime has gone up in smoke. There isn't gonna be any pantomime. Oh, no! Oh, yes! <laughs> yeah, look, I shall answer it in mind. Oh, Adam Painting here. I've just been taking an inventory of the furniture in my department store. So? So, I'll come straight to the point. I have the pieces of furniture you require for your pantomime, and you, I am told, have a vacancy in the role of Widow Twanky. Need I say any more? The part's yours. Splendid. You can start rehearsing tomorrow. Oh, Ethel, there's going to be a pantomime after all. Oh, Ethel. <laughs> Not one, not two, but three genies. This makes our pantomime unique. <laughs> How's your sore throat, Mr. Meeker? Well, my speaking voice is all right, but my singing voice sounds terrible. Now you've passed your nasty germs onto me, and my singing voice is getting worse. Supposing I lose my voice altogether? Have no fear, for I can restore your singing voices to normal. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> Well, what I mean is, um, why doesn't he give you unbelievable singing voices? Very well. When it is time for your next duet, you shall both sing unbelievably. Oh, Air Force! Oh, oh. oh, hello, boys and girls. Oh, I'm so happy I've got all the money in the world. If only I had beauty. Your wish! Is my command. I said beauty, not the beast. <laughs> <laughs> what cute about a little beauty? It's her beauty, not brains. Old Father Time will never harm you if your charm still remains. After you grow old, baby, you don't have to be a cold baby. Keep young and beautiful, it's your duty to be beautiful, so keep young and beautiful. If you want to be loved, don't fail to do your stuff, with a little powder and a bomb, so keep young and beautiful. If you want to be loved, if you're wise, exercise all the fat off, take it off, off of here, off of there. If you're seen anywhere with your hat on, have a Marcel wave in your hat. Take care oh. of all your charms, and you'll always be in someone's arms. So keep young and beautiful if you want to be in love. If you want to be in love. If you want to be in love. Oh, you know I could have 
Pearson. How? Oh, oh, the genies. The genies. What? The genies of the lamp. Lamp. What lamp? Oh, the magic lamp that grants your every wish and is owned by my son, Aladdin. That lamp shall be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, say something lovely. Uh, <laughs> oh, a bit too. It's a funny man. Oh, boys and girls, here comes the Sultan, Aladdin, the Princess, the three genies, and all of the king. Hello, mother. Oh, hello, son. Why so sad? This is a happy time, a time for singing. <laughs> Is something that can be done by two For I really like to say It's a lovely day today Whatever you want to do I just have to be doing it with you What's the fuck if the voice spell has gone wrong? If you've got something that must be done And you can only be done by one There is nothing more to say It's all very well correcting the voice spell, but the damage is done now. You've made us look such fools that the audience aren't taking you seriously anymore. They've completely lost interest in the story. Now what are we going to do? Regain their interest, that's what. <coughs> look, as actors, you have to make them involved, give them something to believe in. Oh, thank goodness Mr and Mrs Mumford are here. At least they're on our turn. A splendid idea. But he needs a little magical assistance. So be it. Henceforth, Master Mumford's parents shall completely believe all that they see on stage. You let Rose. You let Rose. You have come at the right moment, good fellow. I have just found this old lamp in my husband's palace. And now the power of the lamp is mine. Seize the princess oh. and take all Aladdin's rope. Ah! Ah! This was Oh, Phil, this is terrible. What are we going to do? Now get down out of sight. Don't let them see the witnesses, and I'll go and phone the police. Oh, I was just about to phone the police. I, I, I want to report a crime. I see, sir. And just where did this crime take place? They're at the palace. You see, this villain spoke to the princess. Palace? And then he did tried... you say princess? This is PC Meadows speaking. Urgent request. Send a squad car straight round to the palace and stand by for further details. Now, can you describe this man? Well, he was shouting, new lamps for old. And then he rubbed Aladdin's lamp and the genies appeared. Cancel that squad car, will you? It's a hoax. All right, honey boy. What's your name, man? Phil Mumford. No none saw her blow. My daughter has vanished. And I hold you, her husband, responsible. And you shall be punished. <gasps> Hopes, he said, and he took my name. Oh, Phil, it's terrible. And Banaza stolen the princess, and the Sultan's blaming a laddie. What has all that lad's done for him? I, the Sultan, decree that you shall be punished, flogged, and banished to boot. Oh. Of all the cruel vindictive pigs, you swine, you won't get away with this. Oh, don't get it, Bob. Mercy. Don't you worry, young fellow, lad. I'll see to that. Come on, come on, come on. Mr. Cable, do something. Mr. Cable. I am the genie of the lamp. Pay me your wish, and I will obey. Oh, oh can you send Ethel's mother away on a five-year holiday every five years? Oh. I'm 
And there we end children's programmes on BBC One for today.